I'm in the process of filming my updated everyday carry or EDC video. Those are all the items that you store in your pocket on a day-to-day -day basis. But for this particular video, I thought I'd focus solely on the wallet because the wallet could almost be a kit in itself. I try to keep my wallet as thin as possible, although I wouldn't necessarily call it an ultra slim wallet because I do have additional items in there outside of the normal ID, cash, and credit cards. So what I'd like to do for this video is list all of the items and gear that I carry in my wallet outside of the norm, and then I'd like to ask you, the viewers, on what you carry in your wallet. Let's get started. Let's start off first with the wallet itself. For the past few years, I've been using an RFID blocking wallet. Most of my credit cards and debit cards have switched over to including the RFID chip in them, and I wanted to make sure that my wallet offers some level of protection. So I've been using the Access Denied RFID Blocking Men's Bifold Leather Wallet. It's a little bit more on the expensive side, costing around $40, although it offers all of the things that I've been looking for in a wallet. It's also a little bit on the larger side with regard to length and width, but it's been fitting all of my items in there really nicely. There's a lot of different options out there for RFID blocking wallets, although the Access Denied wallet meets FIPS 201 security standards. FIPS 201 is Federal Information Processing Standard Publication 201. It's a United States federal government standard that specifies personal identity verification or PIV requirements for federal employees and contractors. So again, I'm using the leather Access Denied RFID blocking wallet. Now let's open it up and go through the remaining items. Stored in the spine of the wallet, I've been carrying the Zebra SL F1 mini ballpoint pen. It's 0.7 millimeters, black ink, it's fairly inexpensive, right around $5, and it saves the day all the time. I do carry a Fisher Space Pen as part of my normal EDC, but this pen serves more as a backup. It uses its clip to connect to the wallet itself and just locates right in the spine of the wallet so you don't even notice that you have the thickness of the pen in there. It's a telescoping pen, so it extends in length to fit in your hand easily, and it just comes in handy all the time. I highly recommend this pen. It's the Zebra SL F1 Mini Ballpoint Pen. Moving on to where I store the ID in my wallet, I also include a wallet size family photo. This is a morale item. Again, it just reminds me on a daily basis on the reason that I prep. So a family photo. Stored in the same location, I also include a micro SD card. This particular one is made by SanDisk. It's the SanDisk Ultra 32 gig with adapter. And this is mainly for YouTube purposes. I got tired of going to a filming location, expecting to film, taking out the camera, and then finding that I forgot the memory card in my laptop. So now I carry a backup memory card in my wallet, in addition to the backup memory card that I also carry in my Urban Altoids EDC tin. So I just wanted to prevent that. Now I have multiple backups for that. If you wanted to, you could store valuable data in here, like personal information, and just keep that in your wallet. I find that your ID, the thickness of your ID, helps prevent it from getting damaged when it's in your wallet. So it's a pretty safe location for me. But again, I use this mainly for YouTube purposes. So a micro SD card with adapter. I also store one to two U.S. postage stamps in my wallet to use when sending mail. Uh, they come in handy all the time. I just get in the habit of always having a few in my wallet. So, some stamps. Located in one of the back credit card storage locations, I carry a couple of Band-Aids. Lately, I've been using the Johnson & Johnson Advanced Healing Blister Band-Aids for fingers and toes. This particular Band-Aid was originally recommended to me by the Mountain RN. Make sure you check out his channel. It has some additional benefits over normal Band-Aids. It has some properties that help relieve pain. It protects blisters. It's waterproof, so it helps seal out water, dirt, and germs. And it conforms to skin for greater fit and comfort. I used to store normal Band-Aids and alcohol wipes in this particular storage location, although I found that the alcohol wipes would always dry out when they were stored there for an extended period of time. I'm not sure why, but I've omitted them and now I've switched over to this particular version of the Band-Aid, which has advanced healing blister cushions for fingers and toes. They've worked out a lot better for me. Next, let's go over the credit card size multi-tool. For your wallet, there's a lot of different options out there right now for this type of tool, although for the past few years, I've been using the Pocket Monkey by Zutility Tools. I enjoy the Pocket Monkey for several different reasons. The craftsmanship is really nice. It's made in the USA. It's only one millimeter thin and only weighs 0.6 ounces. So it's extremely thin and lightweight, although it's still very sturdy. It has numerous tools included with it, three screwdrivers, you have different nested hex wrenches, although the main reason that I include it is for the bottle opener and the loader opener. 
The bottle opener in particular is positioned really nicely on this tool. It's oriented to provide you with proper leverage when removing a bottle cap. It's TSA friendly, so you, there's no sharp objects or anything like that on this tool, so I really like it. Again, the pocket monkey. Stored in the back sleeve of the wallet, I have some additional bandages that are a little larger in size. The first is the Aquacell Extra. This one is two inches by two inches, or five centimeters by five centimeters. This is a really nice wound dressing. It's a modern wound dressing. It turns into a gel when it comes into contact with the wound. In addition to that, I have the Tegaderm film, which would go over this wound dressing if needed. The Tegaderm film helps protect it from uh, water or anything getting inside of there. And I use these on larger scrapes and wounds. For example, when kid preppers out and about, Oftentimes, he'll fall and scrape himself, and then I'll have these larger bandages for that purpose. The best thing about these wound dressings is that they store very, very thin. They don't add a lot of bulk to your wallet as far as the thickness goes. They're a little bit on the larger size as far as the wrapping goes, though. Stored next to the bandages, I also have a few pieces of paper from a yellow notepad. I have around four to five, usually. I used to carry the Ride and Rain pieces of paper in here, but I found they got too expensive and I was using it too often to warrant it. So now I switched over to the yellow notepad. It goes in conjunction with the Zebra collapsible pen that we discussed earlier. So some scratch pieces of paper. The last gear specific item that I carry in my wallet is one Night Eyes reusable gear tie. This is the three inch version. I've had these in my stash for a while and I was recently talking to Learning to Be Prepared. Make sure you check out his channel. It focuses a lot on backpacks, organizers, messenger bags, things like that. And we were talking and he said, Cliff, I'm finding these to be really useful. And so I did some additional testing on it and he was right. They are very useful. So now I just store one in my wallet. I use this for various reasons, whether it be for wrapping up a, a USB cable doing a minor repair job, anything like that. I went with the bright visibility color so I wouldn't lose it. So a single Night Eyes reusable gear tie. That concludes all of the items that I currently store in my EDC wallet. As you can see, it's fairly thin. I try not to keep too many items in here to make it too thick because after all, I do carry a lot of additional gear in my pockets. But since wallets are such a common item that people store, I thought this would be a great opportunity to get the comment section dialog going and talk about what you guys store in your wallets. So please leave a comment in the comment section regarding the gear specific items that you store in your wallet. I'd be very interested in hearing what the YouTube audience has to say with regard to this topic. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video. Again, please leave a comment in the comment section regarding the items that you store in your wallet. What's in your wallet? Your EDC wallet. See you guys next time.